Hey everybody, welcome to the Song Revolution Podcast, brought to you by Nashville Christian Songwriters. Nashville Christian Songwriters exists to empower Christian songwriters worldwide. I'm John Chisholm, and this podcast exists to bring you valuable songwriting insights, inspiration, interviews, and just all around good fun with some of the greatest songwriters, producers, arrangers, artists, and creatives, and beyond. You can find out a whole lot more about us at NashvilleChristianSongwriters.com. Hey guys, let me ask you a question. What is the one question that every aspiring songwriter has? Well, I think you already know it because you're asking yourself, how do I get my songs out there? If you listened to last week's podcast, you remember that I talked about out there, this kind of weird no man's land of where is out there. And I think we identified that it's where you are. You start where you are and you start using your songs, You these things that are you're passionate about, you're called, you use them in your church, you start where you are. That's where out there begins. At least conceptually, we talked about that. And so today, my guest is my podcast. Podcast producer Peter Hartzell of <laughs> yep. Treehouse Media. Welcome, it. Peter. Thanks, man. So we're going to be talking about how you get your songs out there and the key things that you need to know now in order to take some bold steps and get your songs out there where you want them to be, to be heard for the songwriter that you believe you are. So, hey, it's going to be a great show today. But before we get into that, I have something I want to give you. I want to I want to share with you some things that are going on that I think you're going to be interested in and give you a free download PDF of our Song Builders Blueprint. I'll tell you how to get that in just a moment. But hey, uh, we've got our next Song Revolution workshop coming up October 17th through 19th right here in Nashville. It's our one live event. You know, everything we do, our coaching, uh, all the things that we do with our webinars and workshops are, are online except for the Song Song Revolution Workshop. You might have heard us talk about the NCS Weekend Intensive. It is now called the Song Revolution Workshop. We're kind of tying it in with this podcast. Uh, We're already filling up. It's exciting. October 17 through 19, we've already got confirmed John Mays of Centricity Music, which is the home of Lauren Daigle, Jason Gray, Johnny Diaz, Carrollton, Andrew Peterson, Is He Worthy, and so many more great artists. We get to actually go into Centricity Music, have a barbecue dinner, hear from John Mays. And back in January, Jason Gray stopped by in July. Uh, Centricity full-time songwriter Ross King stopped by to share what it's like to be a songwriter for Centricity. It was so cool. So how often do you get to go into a record label and hang out with the uh, founder and the A&R director? Well, probably not all that often. So October 17th, we're going to be having a barbecue dinner over at Centricity as part of the Song Revolution Workshop. We are limited to about 30 attendees, so I encourage you to go over to NashvilleChristianSongwriters.com forward slash Song Revolution and and sign up today. These spots are going to go fast, so we sure want you to grab one and come visit with us. Peter will be hanging around with us. John Mays, uh, Tom Jackson, who has worked with about every Christian uh, artist that you can name. He's a live music producer. He doesn't go into the studio and produce, but he works with them on stage and teaches artists how to build moments out of their songs, and he's going to do that for you at the Song Revolution Workshop. He's worked with, I, I can't even name all the Christian artists he's worked with, uh, he's worked with uh, Lecrae and um, Sean Mendez and even Taylor Swift. So this guy is top shelf. We've got Kenna Turner West, who is a professional full-time songwriter for Curb Word Entertainment. And this girl is on fire. She's so cool. She is amazing. Everybody loves Kenna. She's got 37 number one hits and counting. I don't know how many songs she's had recorded, but she is just one of our great clinicians. We've got David Barone who is an amazing coach, one of the sweetest guys you'll ever meet. He and I wrote a song together years ago called Oh Mighty Cross, and it's in a couple of hymnals, and we're not even dead yet. You're going to love David. We've got Rob Frazier. Rob is a former member of the band Petra, just a fantastic coach, great songwriter. And and you know what, Peter? He's got a song on Orange is the New Black. I cool mean, factor. I know. Big I know, time, right? Cool and factor. so you're going to love Rob. Everybody mm-hmm. loves Rob. So we have a great roster of NCS coaches and clinicians that you just don't want to miss. So jump over to the website, check out the Song Revolution Workshop, grab your spot today, 
and we'll see you in October. So a little bit later in the show, I'm going to give you the download link for the Song Builders Blueprint, which is kind of the diamond in our Song Builders Blueprint course, which has about 12 hours of training. It's, it's really 30 years of my experience and expertise brought into a course that is really helping a lot of our clients understand how to craft the songs that are that they really can. I mean, it kind of ramps them up uh, to be heard at a much higher level. So we're going to be giving away this 10-page PDF that I think will really be a blessing to you. So we'll be sharing that at the end of the show. So check that out. So let let me go ahead and get into our content today and welcome Peter Hartzell of Treehouse Media. Hey, Peter. Hey, thanks for having me today. Oh, man. Hey, thanks for letting me pop over to your studio yeah. and sound really pro. I love Absolutely. this. I'm kind of jealous. I'm going to have to get a better rig. So, And on top of that, some good coffee. Very good coffee. Yep. We, we get our coffee imported from our hometown in Montana because we just still have yet, no offense to the coffee in Tennessee, but we have yet to find the perfect bean in Tennessee no since we've been here. So we have our favorite blend from uh, Black Coffee up in uh, Missoula, Montana, and we mail, have that ordered in every week. Missoula. Mm-hmm. Wow. Missoula. Missoula Coffee. Missoula Coffee. <laughs> Very cool. Well, listen, you know, you've been with us now for six months or yeah, so. a little over six months. And yeah. uh, we're just about to get up to our one. 100,000 downloads. 100, yep. uh, can you believe that? It's pretty crazy. When I look at the metrics from this this show has always been pretty consistent but when i look back at the metrics since we started uh working on the show together and to see uh to, you know get the responses from you guys that are listening and the feedback from people around nashville on the show and you know people that i i had no idea even listened to the show right that have been listening for a long time listening before i, I even know, jumped right? in and then they'll come to me and say hey man you're doing a great job with this show uh it's pretty it's pretty crazy to think about yeah well you know the first time i met you at church Mm -hmm. and hey sidebar here you (laughs) and your wife amanda did such a great job leading worship on sunday so big shout out to the gate community church Mm -hmm. pastor steve fry steve garrett all the wonderful people there at the gate but i met you at church you know and, and you're like hey i heard your podcast and i think i could help you and i'm like okay who is this creep? I mean, it's like, okay, well, I'm fine. You know, you want to help me, but I didn't need the help. Right. Right. And right. then uh, suddenly I needed help right. and I reached out Perfect to timing, you. Yeah. And the, the, you know, the thing that impressed me about you is that you're a marketing guy, right. you're a trained audio engineer. Uh, you've worked with some very impressive people and mm-hmm. you just, you just have this uh, mindset yeah. uh, that take, that has really helped take our show uh, to a higher level. So yeah. you've really brought a lot of value and, and you're kind of fun so it's, it's i appreciate really that that's if it's not fun i feel like if it's not fun it's not worth doing so i know right man that's a real value to me too it's yeah. like the fun factor's got to be high or exactly. i get bored with it really quick and yep. move on so you've been helping to bring structure and some organization but some real exposure and marketing to yeah what we're doing with the show and i love what you're doing with treehouse media so i thought it'd be really cool Today, if we help bring some value to our listeners, yes. based on what I was saying in the intro about where is out there, and so we're going to get into that, but maybe you could uh, give us a little insight into who you are, and then we'll kind of go from there. Sure. Um, I, I think we've sort of touched on this in previous episodes, so if you look my name up, I think I was the first, uh, when I first started working with you, that first week was our first episode. Together, I know, right? Because <laughs> you needed an interview. So you said, Hey, would you just be my guest? Desperation. So we, um, so we started off. So I think I shared this a little bit, but, uh, my background is in marketing and in audio production. Um, I, I got into this whole world of podcasting a, a couple years ago. And I honestly was never into podcasts. I, I, I didn't hate podcasts. I just never listened to, to podcasts. But I did listen to talk radio uh, a lot back in Montana when I was working for uh, my dad's company and I was driving a delivery truck. So I would listen to talk radio, ESPN radio and, you know, Rush Limbaugh and, and even some of the people on the other side of the aisle. Um, and just I loved the format and the idea of sitting down and, and having time to tell a story. And, you know, whether it was a good story or not didn't really matter. It's just the, the format and the idea of talk radio really has always just kind of been this like this uh, this thing that I've just always thought about. And so when I got into podcasting, it was a natural merger between my passion for audio production, 
my passion for storytelling and conversations with people and getting to kind of pull some layers back and get to hear um, you know, in, in our world, we're talking with a lot of musicians and people in the music industry. And I actually had started my own podcast called the sound mind. And that was really what I was doing, uh, sitting down with guys and saying, okay, we've heard the normal, your normal thing, your normal shtick, but let's take some layers back and let's dig deeper and find out what, what got you to this point. So I didn't think that I would ever be able to do this full time. Uh, I didn't really believe that there was anybody out there that would want to pay me to help them produce a podcast. Um, and then when I first got, uh, I, I got an offer to produce and help Sadie Robertson start her show. And uh, it was, that's like, the duck dynasty. Mm -hmm, yeah. And it was kind of like, Oh yeah, I guess I could get paid to do this. And, and I had already done a couple of shows or editing some shows for people, but I was just charging, you know, pretty, pretty low rate just to cut audio together. Um, and then I realized this is actually going to be more involved. It's going to include more production. It's not just me, you know, editing movie right, faders, right. but more production. And it kind of opened my eyes to this world that I really, I really can do this. And I do have a lot of the skills necessary from my background in media arts and school. I went to school for business marketing and audio production. Mm. So I have all the, I, I wear all these hats and I've, I've got all this experience and I can do all these things. And it, within the last couple of years, I've really started to figure out where, how they all fit together. Right. So when, when we kind of finally landed on an agreement to work together, it was uh, kind of a settling of a lot of things for me too, of this is really a lane that I, I fit well in and I don't have to put down my marketing hat in in right, trade right. for my artistic you know exactly. i can i can keep them both on and not look funny that's so cool <laughs> and and that's really what was so attractive to me too because yeah. you know we have wonderful marketing people yes, whom we love but you know you come at this thing with the perspective of how can i build the show how can right. i bring value to the show uh, you've helped open some doors, you mm -hmm. know, and, and you're really consuming the quality of the thing, leveling yeah. us up. So thank you for that. Absolutely. Yeah. That. And I think in a way, I mean, that's what a lot of our listeners are facing too, because sure. here they are with their songs. They've, they've poured their blood, sweat and tears into these songs. Yep. They have a passion and a calling. They want to get their songs out there. In the other shows we've done together, we talked about some concepts that maybe we should revisit mm -hmm. that you felt were important and then after, maybe later in the show, after our break, I'd like to break it down to some real practical steps. That's great. Exactly what these guys need to do. Mm -hmm. uh, because some of them really are at that place where they, they're ready to invest in this kind of their social media, you know, but, but they just don't, often don't know how. So I want yeah. this to, to be extremely practical. But do you remember from the last shows, um, you know, what I know consistency was one of them, just being consistent with mm -hmm. what you're doing in social. So can you recap some of that for us? I think that is always kind of at the core of when I do consulting now. I always start with consistency because in my experience, that's the one thing that even if you don't have, you know, a big budget to do big video production or big audio production or have a producer on staff or whatever. Like if you're an independent songwriter, you're probably sitting in your bedroom with your guitar or your piano and you have a cell phone. And um, for a couple bucks, you may be able to buy a little clamp to put that cell phone on a tripod and you could set your phone up and record yourself doing songs. And so you don't necessarily need a big budget to do that. Uh, to start a YouTube channel, to start a Facebook. Uh, but but if you have all those things in place, but you're not using them and you're not being consistent with, we talked about consistency in writing uh, daily with writing with other people and also sharing what you have with other people. And, um, but the, on, to be honest, like, you know, the main reason Justin Bieber got discovered on YouTube was because he was putting YouTube videos out consistently, pretty consistently. Exactly. And it wasn't like he was trying to market himself. He was just excited to, you know, he loved. He was a kid. He was a kid and he was like, yeah. he liked to sing. And, you know, his his parents were like, hey, these are great. Let's put these online. And so <clears throat> to me, if consistency is a job or a chore to you, if you think of it more as something you have to do, then, uh then I think you've got some priorities a little bit out of balance. Mm. Why are you trying to share? Uh, we can get into this, and this is probably dipping into what we're going to talk about today, which, Sorry. I mean, if, if we want to just go there, we can. But um, I think that a lot of times 
and, and I've been this way in the past, when it's something I'm not completely committed to or really passionate about, right, I right. have a hard time getting it's the true. motivation, you right. know, which Just, is obvious. I mean, if, yeah. if, if you don't enjoy, if you're, like I said a minute ago, if it's not fun, I don't want right, to do exactly, it. Exactly, right. Sometimes there's things that aren't fun, but you know, I need to get, I need to push through this in order to get to the next level. Exactly. And that's different. It's not what I'm talking about. It's more, um, I, I'm passionate about writing songs and I want to get out there. But if your motivation is just to get famous, then, then there's going to be this striving, uh, element always kind of following you around. Isn't it true? And if, but if your if your motivation is, I know that these songs that I'm writing, even though they may not be perfect, I know that these songs are coming from a real place. And I genuinely feel like if I can just get these out so people can, can be blessed by the song, then if they get discovered and picked up that organically, that's amazing. I know, right? And usually that's how it happens. It's the people that aren't trying to get discovered that get discovered. It's true. And man. the ones that are trying to get discovered always get passed I know, over. Frustrated. It's, it's, it's the weirdest thing. And, and you can't fake it. Like you, you, you got to get to that deep place in your heart where you're not, you're not trying to build your own thing where you're really just like, and this is what I was created to do. And if nobody ever hears a song, yeah. I'm totally okay with you that. You do it no matter what. And I've had so many people or a good strong handful of people, even that I've worked with, you know, that have said, I just want to write for the masses. <laughs> and yeah. it's like, well, you know, you can't write for the masses. Sure. You have to write for you. You have yeah. to write for God. You got to write for the people that are around you. And then if it's, you know, like you just said, man, I mean, if it's authentic and genuine and yeah. cool enough and, you know, that people, you know, may start picking up on it. But it's got to be from that deep heart place that you just do it no matter what. I think, too, like when I think of the songs that are my favorite, the ones that that I listen, that I go back to that you know, even if I don't have, even if, even if it was a scaled back, stripped down, just the songwriter and their, and their guitar or piano, it would be just as impactful as with a full orchestra. Mm -hmm. And, and I think about what makes those songs special and, or, or think about some of the songs in the past, think about shout to the Lord, you know, uh, I mean, that, that song put Hillsong on the map. Did. They were not writing that song to put Hillsong on the map, mm -mm. you know? Mm -mm. And, you know, I think Darlene Check was what, like, 13 years old probably or like yeah that. yeah and so that like if you think about like if if you just stop for a second and kind of go back to all these songs in the church that have become iconic or uh or era making kind of songs and then go back and look at the story behind it i guarantee you every single one of them was was written in obscurity or written in this just this place of this is my heart and people yeah. connect with that. Yeah. Now there are there are songwriters out there that do understand the formula, they understand how to write a good song and they've usually partnered with. I mean, you look at a lot of these songs, now there's there's eight or 10 writers on the song. <clears throat> that and they're all great yeah. songwriters that yeah. that probably could write that song by themselves, but they're collaborating with other people for a reason. Part of it is mailbox money, but the other part of it is because they know the value in partnering together. <clears throat> and you know if if we have eight of us that are all great songwriters put our heads together to put this song out it's going to be that much it's going to have the social equity from the relationships of each songwriter in that group and it also is just going to have that that friendship community vibe that you're not going to get from an independent <clears throat> individual exactly. so yeah when we talked about consistency in the past we were talking about you know posting your stuff out there and engaging with your audience consistently but also writing with other writers consistently yeah, yeah, yeah. don't and again the, the the if it feels like a chore to you then i think you need to reevaluate why am sure, i doing this sure not to say you're not supposed to be doing this but take a step back and say why am i doing this let, let me find the joy and the the motivation that is built into this thing and then write from that place exactly well my big you know, soapbox, mm -hmm. Peter, you know, you know, is that every half hour, 18,000 hours right. of video yeah. are uploaded to YouTube alone, right? <laughs> yeah. And you know a bunch of that's music. And right. so I, I've had this little phrase I've bandied about that we are awash in a sea of mediocrity, yeah. yep. you know, and I, I just I stand by that. And so what we try to do with the clients we work with and through our workshops and this podcast and the articles, everything over at NashvilleChristianSongwriters.com, everything, our, our coaching is all geared to help you stand out. You know, it's right. like consistency, yes, 
Uh, but the, the the myth that all you've got to do to become a great songwriter is write a lot of songs, that, is, that ain't true, man. No, not at all. That is just not true. If no. you're not writing from a place of authenticity, yep. yes. Everybody's kind of, you know, feels a love for their songs, kind of like the kids' watercolor ponies on the, the refrigerator. <laughs> but, you know, there's a difference between, you know, a, a child's watercolor pony and you know a Rembrandt or right. name any great artist, right? Yeah. So you got to learn how to do this stuff, and then practice, and, practice, and then be yeah. consistent in in getting it out there. Yeah. So, was there another element besides consistency that we've talked about in the past? Um, I know, I know that uh, we talked a lot about. Uh, well, I guess it kind of goes hand in hand with consistency. You just sort of touched on it too, uh, but but practicing the craft and mm. and and thinking of it in con in in terms of this is something that I'm refining. This is a, this is a tool or these are, these are tools that I can apply to become a better songwriter. And so becoming uh, a member of Nashville Christian songwriters is a step towards making that commitment for yourself to, mm. to hone your craft. You have to invest some time and some money into the thing that you're passionate about uh, pursuing and it, and some a lot of us look at songwriting as a hobby, and some of us look at songwriting as an opportunity for a career, and so doesn't really matter. I know a lot of hobbyists that spend a lot more money on their hobby than they do on uh, on anything else. Yeah. You know? Well, I yeah, I mean, forgive me for interjecting no, here, but I read a lot of coaching books. Good. You know, I mean, I'm in a season now where. Uh, I've been called to share the expertise and experience and successes right. that I've had over a 35 year songwriting career, yep. stumbling into town in 83 to take a job that fell through hmm. homeless, 40 bucks in our pockets, man. And then now all these years later, right. I, I've, I've had the kind of success that I, I could not have even imagined. Right. But uh, as I'm learning to be a better coach, I actually have invested upwards of 20 grand right, in, in learning how to be a better so coach, good. man. Yeah. I'm going to uh, a really cool uh, workshop uh, with another podcaster, uh, Lewis Howes. I don't mm -hmm. know if you know yep. the School of Greatness, but yep. love Lewis Howes, former NFL player turned lifestyle coach and entrepreneur and very popular guy, millions of listeners. And he's doing a summit of greatness in September. And Brandon, our marketing, marketing guy, guy yep. and I were going to road trip it up to Columbus and, and I'm still investing. You right. know, I mean, you look at NCS and say, oh, well, they, they've made it. Well, you know what? I don't think I'm ever going to make it, That's man. Good. It's like I'm, I got to make it every day. And That's so, so I continue to invest in myself with people with, uh, I mean, I've, I've spent mega bucks for me on learning how to be a coach and learning yeah. how to bring the best out of the songwriters that we get to work with. Yeah. Christian writers, I think, uh, maybe everybody, but Christian songwriters seem to just want it to drop out of heaven. <laughs> you know, if we can pray enough and, and poke a hole in the heavens, then right. it's all going to fall down on us. And, you know, yes, there is there is a sense of, of inspiration, but what we're trying to do is help people capture that inspiration by uh, learning the craft, and, in, and you've got to make an investment in that. So, you know, I'm going to just, I'm going to be really bold here and say that I continue to invest in myself. I That's even great. even coaches need a coach, and That's so I'm so thankful for the people. And you know, you can get coaching. I, I read so many great books. Uh, I'm a I'm an Audible dot com junkie, man. And I am <laughs> yeah. so deep into this stuff right now. <laughs> so just to kind of tag team on what you were just saying, then I, 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 I think it's important. And we do offer NCS membership. It's very very inexpensive. We yeah. do a master class every month. It's just powerful. 90 minutes live interactive you get the archives if you become a member you get discounts and all that kind of stuff so all right so that's good. That's <laughs> so, so, we, good. so we got consistency and invest yeah. and was there anything else before we get well, to our obq today sure i well i think that was investing and also and also putting practical steps in action to what you're investing in and you can invest all your time and money into going to great coaching events or reading great books or whatever. But if you don't actually mm -hmm. apply what you're learning, right. um, and that, again, that is part of the consistency piece, but, uh, but there is a practicality to, like, I, I think I said earlier, sometimes you have to do the things that you may not feel like doing. It may not feel fun in the moment every day, um, but you know, you know, the difference between the things that you just have to do and the things that, you know, are, are not in, 
you don't have the grace for yeah, it, yeah. or there aren't. So yeah, I, I think those are, they all are tied together. Um, but I, I feel like a lot of people are, um, you know, they have one of the three or two of the three pieces. Um, but it, you know, either they're, they're going to be consistent about posting stuff, but there's no rhyme or reason to yeah. it. Or, uh, they're, they're practicing all this stuff that they're learning, but they're not doing anything with it. They're, they're, you know, writing more songs, but they're not sharing them or they're not yes. getting out there. Oh, so so you have to kind of bring all these things uh, together and practice what you're doing, uh, invest in yourself and then, and then get out there. I and think share. so, man, that is so good. And every week when, I mean, it's so true what you said about, you know, every day you have to do something you don't want to do. It's true. Right. Yeah. Oh yeah. And so a uh, couple of stories, uh, my friend Gabe down in uh, Fairhope, Alabama, he and his wife, uh, Mary Hopkins, uh, they own a thriving dental practice. I mean, these guys are working 60, 70 hours a week, mm. but they're also triathletes. Oh my gosh. Right. So biking, swimming, and running. And I ask them, now they don't have kids. So, I mean, you know, this is a little bit of a caveat, but uh, I asked Gabe one day, I said, dude, how do you find time, you know, to do all this? Because people, songwriters will say, well, I just don't have time. Right. You know, it's like, well, and so Gabe, you know, I said, how do, how do you find time? How do you guys find time to bike or run or swim every day? And, and he looked at me and in his own Southern way, he said, well, John, we just make time for the things that we want to do the most. That's so good. You know, and I find songwriters sometimes say to me, well, I just don't have time. You know, I'm working. I got kids. I got this, this, and this. And I'm like, okay, well, you know, we all make time. You know, we make time to watch Netflix. We right. make time to catch up on Chef's Table or whatever it is we're, we're <laughs> yeah. watching, which is a cool show. Yeah. But, you know, you can find the time to do what you want to do, you know, and it does take some doing some things you don't want to do, you know, right? Yeah. And so... Yeah. Our pastor's wife, Nancy, you know, every week when I show up at church, she pretty much says the same th thing to me every week. She says, I just see you all over Facebook. You're just everywhere. And it's like, well, you, you, do, you, do you have any idea what it takes to, <laughs> oh be, my, everywhere, to be everywhere, right? Yeah. <laughs> it takes a lot of work. So so those are some cool things, yeah. you know, the principles of, of consistency and investing and, and honing your craft. Mm. And so I think uh, I got one more question bef before we take a break here and it's what we call our obq yeah and you brought this to our show so i'm going to turn the tables on okay. you here all right our obq is the one big question yes. and it's usually something like okay what is the biggest hurdle uh -huh. you've ever faced in your life and how did you overcome it yep. and so we can kind of talk on a business or personal level sure. spiritual level whatever you want to share man yeah, and the follow up to that question when we have someone like we we're going to be releasing an interview that we did with Phil Kiggy and uh, Rex Paul Schnelli in in a few weeks, um, and f when we asked them, I remember when we we had them in the room and we're thinking about how do we ask this question because of course right. that's a that's a loaded question for someone like Phil Kiggy who's got you know thirty plus. 40 plus years. Oh yeah. And actually he started when he was like 13. I know. I I'm going to say that he's <laughs> yeah. got 50 years. I was going to say he's yeah, 50 years in, uh, you know, if you ask that question, it's, we'd be there all day listening to stories. So, um, I, the follow up to that is what is the scarlet thread? That's kind of been the anchor point in your career. So I'll kind of, I'm going to take some Liberty and kind of answer both questions because they do kind of tie together. Um, my wife and I moved to Nashville officially about five years ago and the journey of getting here has been has been just uh, totally the Lord, but pretty crazy and a lot of hurt and pain that we've had to work through that's been very, uh, on the other side of it, I can see the the hand of God moving in our life. And so our personal testimony, which, which ties in a lot to what I'm doing, is all about God's faithfulness and his goodness and and even at the times where we didn't know or un even understand that we were surrendering and trusting him to take us where he was taking us, uh, we just felt his, his hand on us. And there were so many times where um, he, we didn't listen and he was still merciful. You know, we didn't obey. We felt, we felt like we were supposed to move to Nashville in 2009. Um, and uh, my wife's mom was dealing with cancer and, uh, it was right around that time when she passed away. And so moving would have been really tough, but we also really felt like the Lord was calling us to move because we were actually, we had sold our home and didn't have another home to move into. And, um, 
and there was a lot of things happening and and it had i look when we since we've been here i look back and had we moved here in 2009 there's a lot of things that we probably would have gotten into a lot a lot quicker but as we've been in nashville in the last five years there's been such a, a supernatural um uh acceleration I, I feel like I really genuinely feel like we haven't, we don't have any lost time. Like the Lord has been so faithful to redeem, even in our, mm. even in our fear, we didn't obey at a time where we felt like we were supposed to move, but the Lord in his faithfulness has redeemed that time. Mm. In the last five years, I feel like we have, we've gotten from this place of um, not really knowing what we're supposed to be doing. Why are we here? We still don't really know why God called us to Nashville fully, but, uh, I really do genuinely believe that the Lord, the Lord, really had for us to move to Nashville in order to, um, to be a voice and to to speak into um, people in our sphere of influence, which a lot of times is people in the music industry, and the music industry is going through some big, big shifts and mm-hmm, big changes. Mm-hmm. And I'm just watching, who you know, connecting with you and this show, and uh, connecting with like Tom Jackson and and uh, a lot of these other artists that we've connected with in the last few yeah. months. Um, and also people outside of the music industry um, and just seeing it almost feels like there's a strategy going on and I'm starting to see the pieces fit into place. A lot of that stuff I can't claim any credit for because I was pretty, uh, I was pretty dumb and naive and I just didn't know. Um, But I finally got to this point where I said, Lord, I know that if I take control of my own life, it's not going to go very well Mm. for me. And so I just have to trust you. And he's been so good at every turn uh, even though there have been some painful moments and things that I had to learn from or mistakes that I made, he's been so faithful to to keep us in his um, in his mercy and, and and in that that groove. And so, um, my, my I guess I would say my biggest hurdle uh, has been my own insecurity and and mm. my own like me uh, feeling like I needed to be in control mm. and that the moment. Uh, that I remember specifically a moment where uh, I was just kind of <laughs> not like in the supernatural or not supernatural, not in this like super spiritual place, but I was just, I think I was just driving around in the car and I was like, God, I can't do this anymore. Like I can't, I can't control my own life and I shouldn't be the one in charge. And so I, as scary as it is for me to say this, I trust you. I trust that you're good. And I trust that even though that means I don't know what's coming next or I don't have any sense of like, I don't, I can't look back and say this happened because of me. I don't want to, I don't want to be there. I want to be at a place where in five years or 10 years, I can look back and see, say, look at what God did in my life. Wow. And none of it was by my own doing. And so that takes a lot of stress. And when I'm now that I'm building this business, doing uh, Treehouse media and, and working with clients, I don't have any stress when I go into a client meeting because if it doesn't work out, I mean, of course I, I prepare and I, sure. I spend my, I, I do the things that I need to do to build my business. But, um, but I, you know, I get to that point where I, I get the, the interview or the, the, the consultation. And then I say, all right, Lord, this, you know, this is totally in your, your court now. And I'll do the things that I know I'm gifted to do. But I, if I don't get this client, that's, I'm okay with that. Mm. I may really want this client, but if it's not, if this is outside of, and there's, you know, I, I think you know this and you, you felt this, there's times where you're, um, you're going down a path and you just kind of know this is not going to be fruitful or this is going to be. And, and there've been a few times where I felt like the Lord was like, it's okay. Keep pursuing this. And I needed to, in order to get the con some context and understand this isn't really the direction to go. Um, and that's also been true for me as I am a musician and, I have written several songs, um, really getting to the point of surrendering um, what I thought that would look like. I thought at one point, you know, I'm going to be doing full-time itinerant ministry and traveling around the Pacific Northwest. And I remember the day where that was around the same time where I said, Lord, I just surrender this. Like, like if the, if you're not really in this iteration of this ministry, I don't want to be, sure. I don't want to do it. And so he's taken us, you know, it's been over three years since we've led corporate worship with a band. And then the, this last Sunday uh, we got to lead and it was just, there was such a, there was such an ease to it. And it, it, that I wasn't like trying to impress anybody yeah. or well, I was there, man. Yeah. Was sweet. And, and so 
before though i would have had a lot of stress about that and like mm. i gotta you know i'm leading worship at this church in nashville and i gotta be right, impressive right. and i'm gonna make it and now i'm like i, I don't whatever i don't care i, I mean I, yeah. I, I do i mean i care about uh all of the the craft and the, the mm-hmm. practice and all the mm-hmm. stuff but but i don't need i don't need anything else to right. affirm me your ego wasn't tied up in it and 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 i and i can't take any credit for that uh, it's like the lord has just been through surrendering the lord has just been taking those those things and replacing them with with a, a grounding and a sense mm. of so that i would say would be the scarlet thread throughout throughout our story has been god is faithful and he's good and it, it doesn't matter what we're going through i i remember a time where we would be up and down and up and down right, and these big right. highs and low lows and you know when things were good i was just waiting for that you know that roller coaster to drop and hit a low point and sure enough as soon as i would start getting in that place of fear we did something would happen and we hit this low point point. and the last couple of years i just was talking to my wife about this the other day like it just it's interesting since we've kind of gotten past that there haven't been extreme high highs and extreme low lows everything's just good i mean mm. even even mm. when it's hard even when right. there's there's challenges like we had our our van door our minivan the door just fell off one day <laughs> oh, God. and i think and i think it has more to do with my mindset now i'm like well we got to deal with it like mm-hmm. i i could sit here and belly ache and complain and god why are you punishing me and all that stuff or i could just be like that's rough that's unfortunate but we got to deal with it and just move on wow so it doesn't mean circumstances have changed it just means that our perspective has changed and and trusting that god is faithful and he's good good. that's good peter that's good man well it's so really kind of an overall surrender and to the sovereignty and the goodness faithfulness of god and uh, it reminds me uh, i did a show yesterday with mike donahue of uh, 10th Avenue North. Okay. And he's got a brand new book coming out next Great. week, and it's called Finding God's Life for My Will. Wow. That's great. I love that title. <laughs> Isn't that great? Instead yeah. of finding God's will for my life, finding yeah. God's life for my will. And it sounds like that's what you and Amanda yeah. have done more of. So that's fantastic. Thank you for mm-hmm. sharing that. Yeah. So when we come back after the break, I want to dig into three specific things that our listeners can do even now, practical level stuff, actionable, uh, intentional stuff to get their songs out to a broader audience. Is that cool? Can we get to that after the break? Love it. All right. We'll see you guys in a minute. We're going to take just a quick break and talk about something that I think is going to be very valuable for you as a Christian songwriter. So check it out. Do you feel like God's given you a bunch of songs, but you don't know what to do with them? Do you feel like you've got a real call on your life to write, but you're clueless about where to start? Or maybe you've got writer's block and you're wondering if you'll ever get the creative juices flowing again. Well, we've got you covered with NCS Membership. NCS Membership is all about community and how to grow in this calling you feel deep inside to be heard. We get it. We know that you just want to honor God with your talents and be a good steward of what he's given you. And that's why NCS Membership could be your next right step to grow, learn, be challenged, get connected, and ultimately fulfill your dreams to glorify God and reach others with the same passion you feel. It's designed to help you tell your story and to reach listeners who will love your songs. With your NCS membership, you'll receive 24-7 access to valuable masterclasses on topics such as modern hymn writing, worship writing, song form, lyric development, and recording home demos, as well as discounts for other NCS products and a deep connection into a community of creatives who get you. There are a lot of songwriters out there, so you need to be the best you can be to stand out. Be heard and become the songwriter you were born to be. Just go to NashvilleChristianSongwriters.com now to check out all the great benefits of becoming part of a decidedly Christian community of songwriters from all over the world. NCS Membership, your next right step to being heard. Well, I just hope that you'll take advantage of that and check it out. All right? We bring you good stuff here on the Song Revolution Podcast. So back to our episode. Okay, so here I am. I have 
been through the NCS coaching. I have this bevy of songs that I totally believe in. I've invested in getting at least the best recordings that I possibly can of them, and I really believe in them, and I think it's time for me to take them to the world. And I come to, to Peter Hartzell at Treehouse Media. What's, what's next, man? What does it look like, and what are the, 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 I don't know how many things, maybe three things that you mm-hmm. would be working with me on to help me get my songs out to a broader audience? That's a great, uh, great question. Uh, I, I, I always start with this, this, well, I think we call it, I call it my why. What is the why? What is the purpose? What is the driving force behind what you're doing? Uh, and I try to filter, actually, I don't try. I do filter every single thing that, that when I do consulting, I say, okay, I'll sit down and say, what is your why? Why are you doing this? Uh, what are you hoping to accomplish? What are the, what are the things that really get you going and get you excited about the songs that you're writing, the style, all that stuff? And what is it tr- you're trying to communicate? Who is your target audience? All that, all those things are kind of in this big question of what's the big, the big why. And the reason I start with that is because that's going to be <clears throat> really the big key that's going to help determine what the, what your personal brand looks like right. and how we position you uh, to get the best chance at getting organic following on social medias, your website, all that stuff, as well as when you do start actually promoting yourself and getting yourself out there. When someone comes to your Facebook page or they go to your your YouTube channel or your website, they see consistent branding. They see this is John Chisholm, the songwriter. And, and so, so one thing that I'll do, uh, the first thing I do is I start with that question. And so if you're listening if you can answer that question right now, that's great. That's amazing that you've, you've already, you're already further ahead than 80% right. of the people. So out there. True. Um, but if you don't have that answer, then I can sit down with you and we go through a series of things to find out uh, the answers to those questions. What well, can I jump in with a quick story? Because Greg, yeah. Greg Nelson, who is an iconic Christian music producer, basically built the genre with Sandy Patty and Lauren L. Harris and Steve Green and Peebo Bryson and amazing people. Wow, yeah. He told me on a podcast that he has artists come to him with huge budgets and they don't even know their why. That's true. They yeah. just want to sing. They just want to make music. And he mm-hmm. walks them through the same kind of process. Yeah. So I think you're spot on with that. You, if you don't start with that, uh, then then everything that you, if you don't have that anchor point in your uh, in everything you do moving forward, then then you're going to be fragmented in all of your energy and effort. You're going to spend a lot of money on things that are unnecessary. Right. It doesn't mean that you'd be spending money on the wrong things. It's just you're spending them in the wrong order, sequence, yeah, or the wrong sequence, or or you're you're putting uh, the cart before the horse. And so, if you don't have that figured out first, you're going to create uh, the further away, the further down the road you get with all these other efforts, you're going to get. Uh, more out of balance and eventually what's going to happen is you'll get to a point where um, you find out that you're actually uh, targeting or doing something that's way outside of your your passion zone and you, it feels more like work than yeah, right. fun right practically speaking once we get those answers then what i'll do is i'll sit down and say okay let's let's actually establish your brand let's get uh, your logo and your all of your colors and everything consistent so when whether they're on your facebook or youtube or website or wherever even at a show where you've got posters and a merch table everything is is consistent it feels like you and there's a lot of artists out there that that kind of stuff changes from time to time uh, john mayer is his branding now is different than it was uh, mm. even a year ago mm. but you know but he's got the luxury of having the name that exactly. is his brand right right so the visual stuff is more artistic and more right fun. um but there there's several other uh you know, several, I mean, most major bands have their logo and their branding and their vibe is consistent. And you know, when you see their name, Aerosmith, yeah, you know, exactly. Yeah. (laughs) You know, big colors and artsy and, and loud and, you know, yes, that's a great example. So, and they've been around forever and they haven't changed. Right. Um, Yeah. So, um, so that's, that would be like the first practical step. Then we go into the, the, the step of taking all of the content that you've got videos, photos, whatever it is, getting your social media set up and optimized so that, uh, you do have the best opportunity to get organic followers. Um, and then we start establishing weekly patterns and, and, and consistent patterns of releasing and publishing content so that, 
uh, when people do come to your page, they're not, they're not getting stagnant or stale content. They're getting something fresh, uh, you know, and a lot of people have a hard time posting on social media every day and that's okay. Um, rule of thumb to me is at least post something every other day, Monday, Wednesday, Friday, and then, you know, maybe something on the weekend too. Um, but if you can do that, then you're going to stay in people's purview. I, I think that the social media accounts that are posting three or four or five times a day can get a little, a little right, much. Right. Right. I've done it all, man. I've run the gamut yeah. of how many times, you know, Twitter, Instagram, Facebook, sure. and yeah. And that's stuff that I can manage for you or I can help. I can create a plan for you and, help, right. and give you kind of a roadmap on this is this, here's some best practices and some things you can do. Um, I try to, I try to meet people wherever they're at. And so if you're at a place where you've got a budget, you don't want to mess with it. I can handle everything. Or if you got a, you're at a place where, uh, you don't have much of a budget, but you know, you need help. Then I can, you know, I can come in and right. consult and give right. you some pointers. That's cool. So the, the, uh, the consistency posting stuff like that is, is a big piece. And then, uh, the, the third, I guess, if there was a third piece, it would be, uh, creating a plan for, for consistent content creation moving forward. Content creation is at the core of what I do, uh, video and audio for sure. Um, and then of course, graphics are part of that, the visual stuff. But, um, one of my favorite things to do is record podcasts or to record video, uh, testimonials or, mm -hmm. or even like video style podcasts where you're, you're a talking head. We're going to get there. Yeah. We're going to get there. I want to do that. All that stuff is really, really good. And, and video to me, I mean, everyone knows video, how powerful video is, but, um, I do have a few clients that are not in Nashville and what they tend to do is they'll shoot their videos on their cell phone or if they have a good camera, they'll send them to me, put them in Dropbox. I'll put them through my, uh, my system and edit and add color and make them look good right. and music and all that good stuff, make them look nice and polished and then publish to social media for them. Right. And that works really well. Um, man there, but again, it really all starts back with what is your why? And then all the content that we create is going to always flow from that, that place. So right. that when you get a hundred miles down the road, it still looks like your why it doesn't look different. So, yeah, no, that's so cool. So overall, we're talking about identifying your core message, yeah. identifying your mission, we could say, you know, and, and making everything flow from that core messaging and who your target audience is, is going to be a big, a big determiner in what that looks like. Cause if you're targeting, uh, if you're, if you're primarily writing modern hymns and you're targeting, uh, uh, an audience that's more in a liturgical kind of vibe, mm -hmm. you're going to, you're going to brand yourself differently than if you're a seventh day slumber and writing. Yeah. Rock. Right. Right. You're not going to be targeting your, or, or building an imaging. If you think about seventh day slumbers branding, uh, versus Phillips, Craig and Dean or something else. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Polar opposite. Um, and one speaks to a crowd better than the other. So, um, but again, that's part of establishing your why and figuring out who is my target audience. Who is my ideal target audience? Exactly. Who's my, like my avatar, like you say. Yeah. Who, who are you serving? Yeah. With your music and your message, yep. you know, I'm working with a number of different clients. In fact, we're actually helping about six different clients establish ministries right now. Yeah. And one of them is a lady. Um, hey, Laura. And mm -hmm. uh, she's not too far from the Nashville area, but she came out of a cult hmm. uh, about a year and a half ago. Wow. And she feels a very strong call to reach back to people that are in hmm. that kind of a bondage. She felt like, you know, she didn't know uh, Jesus, the real Jesus, all her life. Hmm. And uh, a year and a half came to know the Lord in a very dynamic wow. way. And so we're working with her to establish, that's her why, that's is amazing. that she knows the real Jesus and she wants people so that good. are still in, in bondage uh, to know him and to know him as she does. And so hmm. we're working with her to write songs to create a new CD. She's writing a book. She's establishing her web presence. And actually, I need to, I need to connect her with you, buddy. Yeah, so that's she, amazing. Yeah, so that's Love what it. we're we're working back on the song side, but right. what you do is take it from there. Totally. And I and it's such a cool one to punch because if you like for me, I understand the song side just as well as I do the other yeah. side. And so to me it's not either or. It's definitely the 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 song 
uh, is so, so, so important. And the message in the right. song is the messaging in the song part of, is that flowing out of your why as well? Like you need to think about that when you're writing songs and then uh, coming from a place of, this is what I'm passionate. I love that story. Uh, I want people to know the real Jesus. <laughs> mm-hmm. yeah, I mean, yeah. Is there a better why out there? <laughs> I don't think so. You know, and so one of the things I'm doing mm. with her is helping her see that it's not just about mm. railing against the negativity right. of the cult, but that she came out of, but it's really about lifting up the real Jesus. That's so what good. it's really about because yeah. she doesn't want to spend the rest of her life railing against you know mm-hmm. the dark uh, the the cult she, specific right mm-hmm. she she needs to be lifting up the real jesus and That's so right. it's just really working well so right. what i'm hearing you say as we kind of begin to wrap this up today mm-hmm. is that it all begins with the song mm-hmm. and uh, the core message the why yeah. but then that's when you step in once once we've got that figured out yeah. kind of on our end working through our coaching membership that's this right. podcast our uh, workshops everything that we do then when you're ready you take it to the next level in establishing a brand you yeah, in, and absolutely. and you are positioned to do that both on a consulting level mm-hmm. uh, a, 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 what do they say uh, do it yourself or done for you right, right? Exactly, so yeah. if you're a do it yourselfer then you've I got can, some options for our listeners who sure. are ready for this where you can can coach them and mm-hmm. consult them on how to do it or if they've got budget, then they can just hire you. You go do, do it, it all, it. right? Yep. And can this be for songwriters and artists, or what? Are, what about the people who are, don't go out and sing? How yeah. does that work? Man, for that's a, that's good. I, I, and I think that a lot of times we tend to forget about. Like, I'm a musician, mm-hmm. so I was a musician before I was a songwriter. I became a songwriter because I was a musician, and so mm-hmm. I do tend to. But I, I, since we've been in Nashville, I've met just scads of songwriters that can't even play a lick on guitar or piano. Uh, or, or even sing on i've met a few that and they're very honest about they're like i just can't carry a tune but yeah I, right but, I, but they really know how to write a song and uh so you know in that sense you're not you're not trying to establish yourself as an artist you know there's a difference between an uh, a musical artist and a songwriter those are two very different things um so yeah as a songwriter it's the same story you're you're trying to establish your brand as uh as a songwriter but your target audience isn't going to be people that are interested in buying your music or streaming or whatever. Your target audience is other music, other artists that right, need, that right. want to co-write or publishers, um, publishers. record companies. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So um, you're still going to be creating a personal brand and you're going to be establishing yourself uh, with whatever, whatever vibe you feel like this speaks, this is me. Um, but then you're going to be targeting different people. Um, yeah yeah and so yeah same principle for it's sure. kind of like a resume yeah but you still have digital to, business cards yeah, yeah you got to get out and promote yourself right. sal oliveri is a producer mm. here in town that i've known for a long time and he's working with some pretty big name people mm. like kathy lee gifford and pink he's mm. got a great single out on pink and he had a the greatest facebook post recently in mm. fact i turned it into a podcast i turned right, it into an article mm. And he said, you are responsible to present yourself to the world. Yeah, and one of the so one of the consistent, sadly consistent tendencies that I'm hearing in the conversations I have with songwriters and singer-songwriters, artists, is that they want somebody to come do it for them. They want the cavalry to mm-hmm. come over the hill and rescue them. But it's really not going to happen, you guys. Right. You are your own rescue and people like Peter are sitting here with mm-hmm. the goods to help you get your songs out there. But yeah. it does take an investment. It takes working through this and deciding how you want to present yourself That's right. to the world. So as we kind of bring this to a close, Peter, any closing thoughts on next steps for the people who might be listening to us today? Yeah, I think the first thing that you you can do, and this is totally free, is uh, is just sit down, maybe you know, get a get a cup of tea or something. Uh, find a quiet moment where you don't, if you have kids where your kids aren't screaming or whatever, uh, go to a coffee shop if you need to, but, but really sit down and just, just ask the Lord what it is that he's doing in your life and, and how he wants to use you um, as a songwriter or as an, you know, as an actual artist, God, how, how do you, uh, where do I fit and, and how do you want to use me? And, and you pour out your heart, you say, God, these are the things that I feel uh, deeply and strongly about, and I want to, 
I want to serve you through this, but, but give me your perspective on this. And then when you feel like you get an answer, then, you know, then you can sit down and say, okay, maybe start taking some notes, write down maybe the top 50 things that you hope to accomplish or the, the, the kinds of things in a dream world. If you were to look back and say, man, I'm like, I'm doing what I want to do, or I'm doing what was in my dream write those things down and kind of envision what life would be mm. like in that place mm-hmm. and then start paring down on, on that list and, and distill it down to the, the number one or two things that you really hope to accomplish. And that's going to really help you clarify what, what is my, why, what is my driving, uh, my anchor point or my driving purpose. And then once we get to that point and you understand that, first of all, it's going to immediately help you in your songwriting because you're going to write from a a much more clear perspective. Then when you call me, you have a conversation with me about next steps. uh, You've already done that part. And that's so, so, so important. Mm -hmm. It's just a good thing to have. I mean, uh, even if you never ask for help, right? It's just a great thing to, to do that. And I, I tend to do that about every six months Yeah, is I'll sit down about every six months and I'll take some time and I'll just get in prayer and I'll really take a look back at what what i've been doing over the last six months and what i want the next six months to look like and you know if you've never done that today's a great day to do that and then yeah and then and you'll get clarity and you'll just kind of you'll kind of know okay this is what i need to do next that's so cool a lot of times when i'm in a potential client call uh, i'll ask that question i'll say okay if we were having this conversation a year from now and you're looking back what do you hope would have happened with your music? And then that kind of helps us reverse yeah. engineer the steps, right? You know, and if they don't have the budget for the, the 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 big dog coaching stuff, well, that's okay. You can still do something right now. Absolutely. You can take an intentional step to get your songs out there. You just got to do it. You just got to do it, guys. got to do it. Hey, Peter, this has been so rich, yeah, man. man. Thank you for Absolutely. just jumping on the show today. Always love having you. You're doing such a great job Thank for you. us. And we've got some... It. Great things ahead, man. Some yes, great do. shows, 10th Avenue North, Phil Keggy, mm-hmm. so many great people coming up, and you're just a big part of that. So it, thanks so much. Yeah. Everybody, thanks for listening today. Let me remind you that the uh, the uh, Song Revolution Workshop is coming up October 17 through 19. We've got some amazing people. You're going to love it. It's going to sell out. So jump over to NashvilleChristianSongwriters.com forward slash Song Revolution. Grab your spot today. If you register by October 10, you save 100 bucks, and that's always a great thing. NCS members save an additional 50 bucks, so you can get in at 645. So, man, jump on that today. We'd love to see you and have you come hang out with us us in Nashville, October 17th or 19th. So as promised at the beginning of the show, I have a 10-page PDF for you called the Song Builders Blueprint. Absolutely free. Just go over to NashvilleChristianSongwriters.com forward slash blueprint, download it, and get on your way to writing great songs today. You're going to love it. In fact, I'd love to hear from you. I'd love for you to, to post over on our page at Nashville Christian Songwriters on Facebook. Let us know how you're liking the Song Builders Blueprint. Again, Peter Hartzell, Treehouse Media. Hey, buddy, what's your contact? We should give them that before we close. Yeah. How, how do they get in touch with you? My, my website is uh, treehousemediaco.com, treehousemediaco.com. My email is peter at treehousemediaco.com. And those would be the best ways to get uh, get in touch with me. If you go to my website, I, I have some samples of some of the work that I've done and just kind of a brief outline of, of what I do. But I typically do custom pricing for all my projects. I don't have one one size fits all. I just found that everybody I talk to has such different needs. Right. So if you do have questions, just send me an email. I, I always give free advice. Love to love to talk with people and, and just find out where you're at. So uh, send me an email, peter at treehousemediaco.com check my website out and let's definitely have a conversation though. yeah get the conversation going yeah. find out your why and get your songs out there with peter hartzell treehousemediaco.com buddy thanks so much yeah man Appreciate all right it. see you next time hey what a fantastic show today i hope you caught all the value bombs that were dropped on this one and that you'll begin to immediately incorporate them into your songwriting 
You know, you can get even more valuable songwriting tools and inspiration when you join NCS membership. You can become a part of a growing community of songwriters from around the world and tap into some of the most powerful resources available to step you up in your songwriting destiny. Check out NCS membership now at NashvilleChristianSongwriters.com and get ready for some exponential power to help you fulfill your call to write. Thanks for listening, and I'll see you next time.